how do you study for the GSSE exam? I was fortunate enough to pass my GSSE on my first attempt, but if I could go back, I would have radically changed the way I studied. So in this video, I pretty much want to run through everything I wish I knew about the GSSE, which is a general surgical science exam for Australian and New Zealand junior doctors trying to get onto surgical education and training or SET. I'll run through general things that I wish I knew, as well as all the nitty gritty details from how long you should give yourself to study for the exam to when you should ideally sit it, what resources you should use. And then I'll run through a step-by-step -step way as to how I personally would have done it to maximize my efficiency in learning, which would have helped me tremendously had I known this before the exams. Starting with some general tips, although the GSSE is primarily seen as an anatomy exam, do not neglect physiology and pathology. From myself, my peers, who have all sat at the last couple of years, most people say that it's a physiology and pathology that they're a lot more uncertain about. I've seen a lot of competent junior doctors not get through the GSSC because of neglecting these sections. Often what happens is people overcompensate in anatomy without realizing to pass this exam, you need to component pass anatomy, physiology, and pathology. Number two, understand the weighting for the exam. Abdomen, pelvis, thorax, and upper lower limb form the bulk of the anatomy. And even though neuroanatomy is really complex, it actually doesn't make a huge portion of the exam. So it doesn't make sense to double down on those sections that are particularly challenging versus doubling down on sections that are high yield so you do your best. I would highly recommend reading the GSSE outline of the exam, which I'll link in the video captions. And finally, to truly know you're ready, my biggest tip is to sit Dr. Julie Mundy's practice exams. She's a cardiothoracic surgeon who out of the goodwill and free time that she has actually runs online mock GSSE exams. And these are at set periods of time with one period of time being right before you have to pay the $5,000 for the exam. So to truly know if you're ready, sit that exam, see how you go on the bell curve. I've personally found that those mock exams are an excellent prognosticator of how well I actually did in the real one. So now to the real questions everyone's been waiting for. How long should you take to study for this exam? This is variable, but I want to give you guys a rule of thumb and that's about six months. I've seen people clear this in either end of the spectrum from three months all the way to people studying a year and still not feeling adequately prepared. And it all comes down to how you study for it, which we'll go through soon. But I think to give yourself that insurance of time without getting overly stressed for that exam, six months is a pretty good time point to run through things in sufficient detail. Secondly, when should you sit the exam? I feel most people that want to do surgery end up sitting the exam within the first two years of working as a junior doctor. And this becomes pretty important because when you move on PGY3 onwards to unaccredited registrar jobs, most hospitals and bosses that hire you actually look to see whether you've completed the GSSE exam. Partly it shows a commitment to training as for some of the bosses I've spoken to. And for others, logistically, it helps because it means that trainee won't need to take that big portion of study leave, etc. In terms of an ideal world, you might want to sit it before the end of PGY2 or ideally even before the interviews of PGY2 going into your third year of work, the beginning of second year. Now, I've heard of many trainees who've sat at PGY3 onwards, et cetera, who are on the surgical education training program. So I personally opted to sit it at the end of my first year in the October sitting. But if you feel like you're preparing well, you're tracking well in Julie Mundy's mock exams, you might even be able to sit it middle of the year. And if you're built different, then maybe the March sitting is for you. So what resources should you use? I found this really overwhelming as well because Last Anatomy is a verbal textbook of anatomy, which is insane because I can't visualize anything unless I see it. And so my brain struggles to generate images from text. And meanwhile, I had no idea what you needed to study in terms of path and fizz. Now, the game changer resource for me was actually given to me one month before the exam. It is the PDF question bank, not the Excel one, a PDF question bank that has structured all the anatomy, physiology, and pathology questions by anatomical location or structure or system, giving you the question, giving you the answer, as well as the explanation copy pasted from the relevant sections of last anatomy. And then it goes on to actually include perfect pictures 
from Netta's Atlas of Anatomy. So in terms of your study, you wanna get your hands on this PDF question bank. Comment down below and I will direct you to it. You wanna have access to LAS. I prefer the ninth edition, and that's what seems to be the one that most people like. And then in terms of images, Rohan's Anatomy textbook, which has cadaveric dissection images, is beautiful for actually seeing the real life course of these nerves, arteries, muscles, etc. And then to look at exemplary, colorized, illustrated diagrams, Netta's Atlas of Anatomy is great for that. So for anatomy, essentially four different resources, the PDF, Q&A, bank, must get your hands on it. The prescribed text, last ninth edition, Rohan's anatomy textbook, and then Netta's Atlas was great. Other optional helps could be doing a dissection course at university, which I did, helped a lot, uh, as well as the GSSE Anki decks. I personally didn't use it, but uh, I heard they're quite helpful. Now for path and phys, this is a little bit harder and there's a bit of variation between what people used. But for me personally, the PDF question bank was great again in seeing the questions, seeing the exemplary answer. And then I simply went back to the prescribed textbooks when I didn't understand and controlled F them. So this would be Robbins for pathology and Ganong's for physiology. Notable mention are some summary texts and videos that I thought were amazing. The Pathoma book for the US MLE is pretty good for pathology for the GSSC. There is a lot of crossover. The IMET pathology notes as well, IMT is also really good for pathology. And then in terms of videos, I found West's physiology textbook and YouTube videos that you can find online were great for respiratory physiology. Okay. Finally, how exactly to study for this exam? Let's start with anatomy. So for anatomy, you wanna have one detailed run through through every single question until you understand it to a T. And then I personally found two additional speed runs that took days to a week entirely to complete the anatomy section was pretty helpful. I initially went about it about one to two weeks per section. And this is a hard part that I think most people struggle to do most people tend to read last and then try the question, but then they forget the details of last that were relevant to the question. I found doing the inverse question-based learning helped a lot. I would go straight into the question from the PDF bank, of course, stuff it up the first time I did it, read the answers, which would make a lot of sense, and then read the relevant section from last that was in the PDF, which helped a lot. And then what I do is literally control F that section in last ninth edition, read that whole section about the organ, whether it be the liver, and then I would control F liver in my digital copy of Rohan's anatomy and see all the images of the liver and match it to what I actually read in lasts. And at the same time, I'd also have my Netta's Atlas of Anatomy and control F the liver as well and look at the differences between Rohan's, Netta's images, and often Netta's illustrated diagrams help you understand the cadaveric dissection images which aren't as simplified. And so one to two weeks per section, and then after you've done all the sections, you wanna have two much faster run-throughs where you're aiming to redo all the questions, consolidate your knowledge with the aim of being exam ready. And your final run-through of a particular section, whether it be abdomen pelvis, for example, could probably even take you a day or two to do the entire section of questions. And that's what I found. In the week before the exam, I actually redid the entire bank and it took me less than a day to do each section, although with some intense study. Path and Fizz, I don't have as great of an answer. Some people used Leon Lai's notes. Uh, he's now a neurosurgical boss. There's, there's a few doctors who've actually made notes themselves, but I personally found just using the PDF to be very helpful. My use in masters was great for anatomy, but I didn't find it as helpful for pathology and physiology. Essentially for pathology, just make sure you double down and do the high yield sections, which tends to be inflammation, neoplasia, and I think cellular adaptation and injury are like the key components of the pathology section of the exam. Surprisingly, they don't repeat many pathophys questions from what I've personally seen when I sat the exam versus anatomy and what my friends have told me in later sittings as well. So make sure you understand the principles of inflammation, neoplasia, etc. And again, I'll just do the PDF bank. And if you don't understand any sections, then you can go into Robin's Pathology, control F the section, or you can try watching a Pathoma video, which is made for the USMLE, but also has a lot of crossover and teaches you uh, concepts that 
trailer to the GSSC2. In fact, for pathology, I only went through the high yield sections, which ended up being the general pathology, like neoplasia, inflammation, and there are a few other banks that, I, that were quite high yield. Dr. Julie Mundy gives out great resources when you sit her free mock exams. The IMET path notes are great for skimming through and getting a really high yield understanding of concepts. And then Robbins and YouTube is pretty much all I used. For physiology, I would actually do the similar process where I would read through the PDF question bank, look at the answers, and the answers would be copy pasted sections from Ganong's, etc. And then if anything didn't make sense, I'd actually go to Ganong's in the textbook, read it. And I found ChatGPT to be quite helpful for my path and fizz to understand underlying mechanisms, especially when I had very close-ended questions. I would actually use GPT to ask it and I would pretty much get a very personalized answer which Google can't really give you. So that's one way you can use it in a very legal way <laughs> for your exams to fill in gaps. And then for respiratory physiology, I would highly recommend watching West's uh, physiology YouTube videos. I think there's also a there's also a textbook which I didn't read into much detail, but the videos are amazing for understanding concepts like emphysema, bronchiectasis, and I personally found respiratory physiology really hard. Again, double down on the high yield sections. So I remember it was gastrointestinal, cardiovascular, and respiratory physiology that were very high yield um, and a greater weighting than the other sections. So I mainly just did those a couple of times. Unfortunately. Like I said, physiology and pathology do not have much repeated questions. And so it's really important you understand the principles of all the concepts. So when you get new question types, you can apply those templates uh, to those new question types and generally get the question right. It's not an easy exam. So if you find that you don't pass, especially in your first attempt, remember that's not uncommon. I was looking at the stats and I think the pass rate is a little bit under 60%. So 40% of people that sit the exam every sitting do not pass. And remember, you just got to pass this exam to get to the next stage in your career for surgery. So best of luck. You got this.